Yes. The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service according to actual sales records. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that roly-poly little road hog who, whenever he's stopped by a traffic cop, always says... Hey, Costello, Costello, come here. Where have you been? Hey, wait a minute. And where did you get that suit? It looks like a naval officer's uniform. Oh, a naval officer's uniform. Uh-huh. I should hope to tell you, Abbott, I'm going to join the Merchant Marine. How do you like the fancy uniform? Get a load of gold braid on my cap. The gold braid on my sleeve. Uh, wait a minute, Costello. Uh, that's a nice uniform, all right, but you've got the pants on backwards. I know. I want to be a rear admiral. I <laughs> Look, you can't get in the Merchant Marine. You couldn't pass the physical examination. Who couldn't have it? I walked in the recruiting office this afternoon, and everybody stood up, and, and the captain pointed at me, and he said, Boys, there's a whale of a man. The captain said you were a whale of a man? Well, he didn't use them same words. Mm, what did he say? He said, Boys, get a load of that big hunk of blubber. <laughs> you know, I can hardly wait till I get on my ship, Abbott. Sally, Sally, over the bounding New Jersey. Now, wait a minute, wait, now, wait, wait a minute. That's over the bounding Maine. I come from Patterson, New Jersey. Why should I give a plug to Maine? No, I love, love. <laughs> well, there you are. That shows you you know nothing about the sea. You're not a nautical man. I'm not what? I said you're the, you're the least bit nautical. Oh, I have my moments. Oh, I no, really you do, don't. Abbott. No, I no, do. No, no, no. After all, a fella can't be nicical all the time. There's no sensical in being nicical when you meet a little cuticle who wants to be nautical. Oh. <laughs> what are you talking about? What am I talking about? Yes. Well, last nightical, I met a cuticle riding a bicycle. I bought her a popsicle, and just as she was going to give me a kitsicle, a copsicle on a motorcycle blew his whistle and gave me a slapsicle in a pussicle and sent me homesicle. <laughs> Uh, that's enough of that silly talk. Uh, what do you mean by coming in here talking about being a sailor? You don't know anything about the sea. Who don't? My whole family were sailors, Abbott. Even my uncle Artie Stubbins was a sailor. Uh, what was his capacity? Five quarts. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Uh, what did he do as a sailor? He was on a tanker. Uh, where is he now? On a bender. Uh, with... <laughs> now, will you be serious, please? Now, uh, take me. Who wants you? Uh, no, shut up. I love the sea. The sea is in my blood. Sailboats, steamboats, rowboats, they're all in my blood. No wonder your skin is so lumpy. Oh. <laughs> you can joke all you want, but I love the sea. Do you realize that I lived on salt water for 20 years? How can you drink that stuff? Oh, never mind that. The ocean is wonderful. Did you ever see the flying fishes fly? All the leaping tuners leap? Nope. But I saw the dolphins dolph and heard the porpoises porp. Uh, look, 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 Costello, I'm going to see how much you know about boats. Now, have you have you ever been down to the docks? Yeah, I was at the docks this morning. Uh, did you see any vessels? Yep, the nurse carried one in. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not talking... <laughs> I'm not talking about that kind of a dock. I'm talking about a wharf. A what? Uh, a wharf, 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 wharf. Oh, that's cute, Abbott. Now, yeah. give me a paw. No, 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 no. <laughs> The wharf is where the boats embark. Do what? Uh, embark, embark. Woof, 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 What are you doing? I didn't know you wanted to play doggy. Oh, <laughs> Costello, please. I don't think you know anything about boats. Do you know anything about sloops? Oh, I'm crazy about sloops. There's nothing like a hot bowl of sloop with plenty of clackers. No, no. You dummy, you wouldn't know the difference between a... I'm starting to talk like Charlie Chan. Listen to me, please. I'm just, I'm just after telling you, you wouldn't know the difference between a sloop and a gunboat. That's what my mother made for lunch. She made what? Chicken gunboat sloop. Ah. <laughs> you please talk sense. Look, how about this boat you're going out on? How fast is it? How fast is it? Yes. It goes 40 miles an hour. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't mean miles. You mean your boat goes nuts. My boat goes nuts? Certainly. Every boat goes nuts. What drives them nuts? Uh, the engines. <laughs> the engines, engines drive the boats nuts? That's right. we got to get word through to Gene Autry. He'll fix those engines. No, no, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. no hi yeah, I know, I know. Hi-ho, everything. I'm not talking about engines. 
Engines. Engines. The faster the engines turn, the more knots you get. And the more you talk, the more knots I get. Now, <laughs> will you please listen? Knots are nautical miles. For instance, if you ask a sailor how fast the boat is going, he won't say miles to you. He'll say knots to you. And I'll say knots right back to him. Ah, no, you don't. No, 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 no. You're a fine sailor. Great guy to have on a boat in case of an emergency. Look, what would you do if you were on a boat and it started leaking in the middle of the night? I'd put a pan under it and go back to bed. No, no. <laughs> uh, well, ain't that right? No, certainly not. <laughs> Suppose there was a big hole in the side of the boat and the water was rushing in. What would you do? I'd bore a hole on the other side and let the water out. <laughs> hey, you see, there you go again. Why, you don't even know what part of the boat from... You don't one part from the other. Oh, yes, all. I do. No, yes, you I don't. Do. Yes, I do. Well, let me, let me hear. Let's all see. Right. All, all right. right, go ahead. Well, Name the, the different the bow, parts of the boat. Okay, the bow, the bow is the front of the boat. That's right. The stern is the back of the boat, and the starboard is on the right side. Yeah. Where's the port? In the bottle in the icebox. Say that. No. <laughs> I told you. Look, look, look. Suppose, suppose you were out in a boat and a strong east wind came up. What would you do? I'd throw out an anchor. That's right. All right. Now, but suppose a terrific west wind came up. I trod on another anchor. But suppose a north wind came up. Then I trod on another anchor. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you getting all those anchors? Same place you're getting all that wind. <laughs> Costello, you are without a doubt the most imbecilic moron I have ever met in my life. Thank you, Abbott. That's and all right. I wish you'd tell that to my Uncle Artie Stebbins. Why? He thinks I'm a jerk. <laughs> Now you hear all sorts of rumors about the cigarette shortage. Theories are tossed around like confetti at a New Year's Eve celebration. Well, I'm not going into all the whys and wherefores, but I can speak for the makers of camels. More camels have been made than ever before in our history, and still the demand can't be met. But when you do get camels, they are camels. Still a cigarette of costlier tobaccos, blended in the time-honored camel way. Not one shred of tobacco that isn't properly aged is being used. Camel's reputation will not be sold down the river, no matter what the pressure of these times. Ask for camels every time you buy cigarettes. Their rich, full flavor and cool mildness make them worth asking for again. And again. C-A-M-E-L-S War or peace, camel is still camel. Camel Cigarettes now presents Freddie Rich with a wonderful arrangement of Sweet Dreams, Sweetheart. the idea of dragging me down here to the shipyards? Well, Costello, if you're going into the merchant marines, you've got to learn something about boats. Now, see right over there, tied up to that pier, you see two schooners and a skiff. Oh, this must be, be the place where my Uncle Artie Stebbins was last night. Mm, what do you mean? He had two schooners and he come home skiff. No. Oh. <laughs> Will you cut that out, please? Hey, Abbott. Abbott. What? Look, look. What? What's that funny-looking boat over there without any top on it? Oh, that's one they're just building. That's a hull of a ship. You're telling me. But what kind of a boat is it? 
Hey there, fat boy, step aside. We're about to christen a ship. All right, lady, break that bottle of champagne over the stern. No! <laughs> lady, what's the idea? He said, get the bottle, not me. Oh, I'm so sorry. In all this fog, I couldn't tell one tub from another. <laughs> Let me at the day. Yeah, get away from there, Costello. It's not her fault. She mistook you for a ship. I I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, no, you didn't. You just cracked my boilers and my engine room was flooded. <laughs> I should let girls around shipyards, Abbott. I'm telling you. Oh, I have a perfect right she to be here. She looks like a blood transfusion. All right, never mind that now. I, I said that, didn't I? Perfect right to be here. In fact, they named this boat after me because I have such graceful lines. My friends tell me I look just like a streamlined ship. Well, don't look now, kid, but your cargo has shifted. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What are you two guys hanging around here for? My friend Costello here wants to be a sailor. Oh, he does, huh? Yes. Well, come on, fat boy. Grab that duffel bag and follow me. Okay. Oh, put me down, you fool. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lee. In all this fog, I couldn't tell one old duffel from another. <laughs> Costello, come on, let's go. Come on, please. Let's get going. Come on. Yeah, step right into this office and we'll examine you. Now, that's it. Now, uh, open your shirt, Costello, and let me see what kind of a chest you've got. Oh, I couldn't do that. Oh, come on, Costello. Open your shirt. Yeah, but I can't. I feel too embarrassed. Just embarrassed to show your chest? I forgot to comb it this morning. <laughs> come on, here. I'll help you off with your shirt. Come on. Say, you got some nice tattooing there. What's that picture of that lady on your back? Oh, that's Whistler's mother. Whistler's mother? Well, what are those two sailors doing there with her? Those are the guys she whistled at. <laughs> hey, Costello. I see you've got General Eisenhower tattooed on your chest. Yeah, and I got General Montgomery on one shoulder and General Patton on the other shoulder. Have you got any more? I wish I could show you Hitler. <laughs> Why not? I don't want to take my shoes off. I might catch cold. <laughs> oh. Well, Costello, you seem to be all right physically. Now, just step in the next room and see the officer in charge of personnel. I, I am so grandy on the poop deck. I'm a dandy. Hey, look, Costello, it's Kitso. Can you imagine? Well, 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 for goodness sake. What can I do for you, boys? I'm in charge of the CBs. CBs? Mm, yeah, could be. Now, just a second, Costello. What are you doing with your hand? I'm saluting you. That's a very funny salute. Can I help it if my nose itches? <laughs> Costello, behave yourself. Uh, Kitson, could you use a man like Costello on one of your ships? Oh, yes, indeed. You know, I've got a ship leaving tomorrow for the Underwear Island. The Underwear Island? Ha-ha, uh -huh, the West Undies. <laughs> oh, I was telling you last summer with a picture company. In the West Undies? I was making shorts. Oh. <laughs> He was making shirts. Oh, I get it. <laughs> making shirts. <laughs> I don't wear them. Uh, listen, Kitzel, where else does your boat go? Well, after it leaves the West Indies, it goes to Cuba, Puerto Rico, and Haiti. And what comes after Haiti? Haiti 1, Haiti 2, Haiti 3. Oh, Abbott, this guy is nothing but a big no-bab. What is a no-bab? Spelled backwards, baboon. <laughs> oh, who? Who are you calling a baboon? In my country, that means fight. Well, in my country, that means fight, too. Well, how do you like that? We're both from the same country. <laughs> Costello, quit arguing or Kitzel won't give you a job. Yes, sir, Mr. Costello, and you know I got just a job for you. We're looking for a brave boy like you to fight man-eating sharks oh, in I'm the afraid. water. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. What? I'm afraid. I'm afraid I couldn't take that job on account of my middle name is Earl. What's, uh, what's your middle name got to do with it? Earl and water don't mix. Costello, don't be such a coward. Why don't you admit that you can't swim? Who can't swim? Every night I go swimming after dinner. You mean you swim on a, a full stomach? No, I swim on my back. Last night I was out swimming in the ocean. I saw a school of whales swimming eight feet above the water. Oh, now just a second, just a second. How could a school of whales swim eight feet above the water? This was a high school. <laughs> Take a high school. Well, we're going to see how much you know about swimming. I challenge you to a swimming race right now. There you are, Costello. <laughs> Kitzel is calling you bluff. Yep. All right, Kitzel, tell you what I'll do. Do you see that little red light way out in the water? Mm, yes. Well, we'll swim out to that red light and back. And the guy who makes it in the fastest time wins. Oh, 
Okie dokie, I'll go for you. Go ahead. Well, there he goes, Costello. He's swimming straight for the red light. You'd better be ready to try it when Kitzel gets back. Kitzel ain't coming back. Isn't he coming back? What do you mean? That red light is on the back end of a boat going to China. <laughs> Tonight, Connie Haynes sings a beautiful ballad for her camel audience. I'm making believe. I'm making believe that you're in my arms. Oh, I know you're so far away. Making believe I'm talking to you. Wish you could hear. What I say And here in the gloom Of my lonely room We're dancing Like we used to do Making believe Is just another way of dreaming So till my dreams come true Good night, turn out the lights and kiss my pillow, making believe it's you. corner of Maine and Catalpa Streets, two men were talking. So I said to him, Frank, I've been buying from you for 14 years. You've got to give me some camels. Yeah? Then what? Stoop down under that counter, I said. Come around here and see for yourself, he said to me. No camels? No camels. Yeah, same with me, too. So I've been smoking this, spraying and that. Huh. Remember how those guys in the radio used to say, compare camels with other cigarettes? Huh. Now when you got to compare, whether you want to or not... You really begin to catch on to what great cigarettes those camels are. Yeah. Mild, but boy, what a flavor. You knew you were having a smoke of camels. Yeah. But I keep on buying camels, asking for them every time I buy cigarettes. Get them, too, sometime. And do you know I was talking about... Yes, folks, keep on asking for camels. Costlier tobaccos really aged and still blended in the traditional camel way. This is one brand that will not be sold down the river. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels, war or peace, camel is still camel. Costello, this is ridiculous. We've been rowing around this harbor in the dark for over an hour. And they've chased you off every ship. Nobody wants to hire you as a sailor. And besides, I'm very hungry. Oh, here's a bottle of milk. Catch yourself a fish. What kind of a fish could I catch with a bottle of milk? Catfish. No. Oh. <laughs> Look, let's go back to shore. Not me, Abbott. I'm going to every boat in this harbor until I get a job. Hey. Hey, look. There's a boat bearing down on us now. Ahoy, in that row boat. Can you spare a dime for a cup of coffee? A dime for a cup of coffee? Who are you? Oh, just a tramp steamer. <laughs> <laughs> A 
is a quarter, Niles. Go scuttle yourself, will you? Hey, Costello, there's a big ship lying at anchor. And there's a ladder hanging over the side. Look, I'll grab you by the coat and boost you up. What, Rip? Your coat is gone. Then you better grab me by the shirt. What, Rip? Your shirt is gone now. I'll grab you by the trousers. I'm afraid to ask. What's coming off down below? You'd be surprised. <laughs> better get you aboard. Never mind aboard. Give me a barrel. Stand by below. I'm sending down my first mate. Put something around me, Abbott. Quick. His wife is coming down. Ahoy up there. Don't bother sending down your first mate. All right. I'll send down my second mate. How do you like that? The guy's a pigamist. <laughs> Don't send down your second mate either. How about the third mate? But the guy's got three mates. What is this? To see a matrimony? Oh. Go ahead, Costello. Climb aboard. Well, welcome to the SS Sponge. <laughs> <laughs> this sponge is soaked. <laughs> hey, you must be our new admiral. Uh, just a minute, Captain. Wait a minute. Quiet, quiet. Right, what's the matter? Abbott, this guy oh. thinks I'm an admiral. Oh. This is my big chance to run my own ship. Take it easy. Here, here I go. Watch me, watch me put Take it on. Take it easy. Go ahead. Crank up the ship. Let's get started. Put it in gear. Oh, but, sir, you can't start the ship until you get steam up. I'll get steam up. Hey, steam. Yes, sir. Get up. Uh, anything else, sir? Yeah. Batten down the hatches. But the hatches are all battened down. Batten them down again. We'll show those hatches. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Costello. You can't make this ship go until you weigh the anchor. Okay, Abbott, bring me the scale. No. Before you start, Costello... You'd better get all your hands on deck. Get what? Your hands. Where are your hands? In my pocket, you dope. Costello, what about the weather? Did you get the weather forecast? The what? The weather forecast. How do you find the weather? I opened the window and there it was. No. <laughs> this is serious, Costello. Suppose we run into a storm. Oh, I don't think we'll have a storm. Uh, how about a shower? Take one if you think you need it. Oh. <laughs> and I think you need it. Uh, never mind. I think we both need it. All right. Come on, Costello. Let's go up on the captain's bridge. On us what? That thing over there is the captain's bridge. For goodness sakes, how does he get that big thing in his mouth? <laughs> oh, pardon me, sir, but we'd better not set sail. The barometer is falling. Well, pick it up and let's get going. <laughs> Avast, you slobs! Slobs! <laughs> Lord board the main sail, raise the jib sail, lower the sheets, and change the bedspreads. <laughs> well, we're moving, Costello. Isn't this wonderful? Here we go over the bounding waves. Up and down, up faster, and down, up and down, up and down, up the board, up the board, stop the board, and then stop the board. What's the matter with you? Something terrible is going to happen. How do you know? Are you psychic? No, I'm seasick. Ah, you'll be all right in a minute. Let's take a walk around the deck. Hey, Abbott. What? Isn't the air wonderful? What do you What's mean? that little coop up on top of the ship? That's the crow's nest. The crow's nest? Mm -hmm. Let's go up and take a peek at the little darlings. Oh, please, please. There are no crows up there. Then what are those big birds flying around up there? Uh, those are gulls. How can you tell the gulls from the boys? No. Come on, please, Costello, please. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, I want to climb up in that crow's nest and gather some eggs. There are no eggs in that crow's nest. There must be a couple of them just dropped after that last gag. <laughs> Look, please, forget about the eggs. I wish I was an egg. What do you mean? Now, take it easy. Recitation. Please. Now, wait a minute. Look, wait Recitation. A minute. Just a minute. Look, now, Recitation. look. Now, be careful what you're saying. I'd like to be a little egg sitting in a tree. When you'd walk by, I'd break myself and splatter thee with me. <laughs> Some yolk. Yes, plenty. <laughs> Costello, please, cut that kind of stuff out. Well... I think I'll go below and get something to eat. Uh, where do I eat? Well, you can mess with the captain's wife. Not me. I ain't messing with nobody's wife. <laughs> oh, pardon me, sir. We'll have to turn back. We're going to run into a squall. A squall? What's an Indian's wife doing out here in the ocean? <laughs> Costello, look. There's something I looming up ahead of us the in the fog. Shadow. Hey, do you oh, see it? Something looming up ahead of us in the fog. Yeah. He's trying to run into us. Yes. Hey, you! So you know the rules of the sea? Get out of the way! Do you want us to run into us? What do you mean, run 
into you. This is a lighthouse. Well, get it out of the way. You're on the wrong side of the street anyway. And dim your lights, you're blinding me. Costello, you'd better let me take that wheel before we're all killed. Don't you get worried, Abbott. Don't you worry. I can steer this boat. I know every rock along this coast. That must be a strange one. Hey. Uh, Costello. What? I think you struck a reef. A what? Reef. Reef. You were barking much better in the first spot. Right. <laughs> hey, we're moving again. Look out, Costello. There's a little fishing boat dead ahead. Fresh clams at 25 cents a dozen. Fresh clams at 25 cents a dozen. <laughs> Clam a chow to ten cents a bowl. Clam a chow. Hey, Abbott, give me some crackers. I'm in the sloop again. Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight, we salute Lieutenant Everett E. Pruitt of Monday, Texas. In one night, he led a patrol across the Raw River through minefields and into Siegfried Line positions. He brought back three wounded men under machine gun and artillery fire and single-handed fought off eight Germans with a rifle and hand grenades until the wounded men were safely away. In your honor, Lieutenant Pruitt, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas 400,000 camel cigarettes. Each of the three Camel Radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million Camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are fighting, and in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy also to Central and South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore, Monday to Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks, and next Thursday to Abbott and Costello. And now here, Bud and Lou, back with a final word. Uh, well, say, Costello. Yeah. Did you know that your kid brother, Sebastian, was sitting in the control room all through the show tonight? Yeah? What's he doing in there? I'm going to find out. Hey, Sebastian. Se- come on out here. Hello, Uncle Bud. Hello, Louie. I came down here tonight to ask you guys to do me a favor. Well? What's on my mind? I mean, uh, what's on your mind? Yeah, but if I'm going to play these double parts, I want more money. <laughs> come on, Sebastian. What do you want? Well, Uncle Bud, I'm thinking of starting a program of my own. And I got a couple of good guys to, to help me do it. Midgey Shields and Tommy Lamb. And we want to put on a nice program. Now, you know all the big shots in radio. You can help me. Well, we'd like to help you, Sebastian, but really, we don't know anybody. Don't give me that. I heard this program tonight. You must know somebody. Now, look, Sebastian, I'm surprised at you to think that you would come out here on this microphone and deliberately try to discredit the acting ability of her brother Lou and myself. How can you be so ungrateful? What in the world is the matter with you? Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. A suburban railroad station. Two men go into the smoking car. As I was saying, George, that's one of the best-looking pipes I've ever seen. Beauty, isn't it? My son Tommy, you know, one of the 8th Air Force, he's home on furlough. Brought me this from London, but, uh... Yes? Well, I hurt to hate the kid's feelings, but the goddamn thing burns my tongue brutally. If it only smoked as good as it looked. Why, oh, why doesn't someone tell the grieving gentleman about Prince Albert's smoking tobacco? Real He-Man tobacco flavor and yet gentle to the tongue as a mother with her babe. No bite treated to take out all the bite and parch. Crimp cut, too, for perfect packing, smooth drawing, even burning. And a bargain. Just about 50 pipefuls in one regular two-ounce Prince Albert package. The Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes will be back at this very same time next week. Don't miss it. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.